Welcome to our service of parish worship in the first Sunday after Lent. We begin by our having our first hymn, Leaders, Heavenly Father, Leaders. Let us ask God to bless it and to keep us faithful to the spirit he has given us. Lord God Almighty, creator of all life, of body and soul, we ask you to bless this water as we use it in faith, forgive our sins and save us from all illness and the power of evil. Lord, in your mercy, give us living water, always springing up as a fountain of salvation. Free us, body and soul, from every danger, and admit us to your presence in purity of heart. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank 
mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you and also with you we say together Almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. To be redeemed upon thy throne of glory, lift we our weeping eyes in holy Listen, O Jesus, to our supplications. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. O thou chief cornerstone, bright hand of the
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for the First Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness, and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to the Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Pardon not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that your words would find a place in our hearts this day. Amen. So it's a little bit like deja vu in a sense, because one of the uh, last times that I pre preached, we preached on this verse. And if you recall, I spoke about Jesus being baptized in the Jordan and the clearing of all the minds. And that's only a few weeks ago, but here we are again. So <coughs> there's something about this passage that we need to hear. I think the lectionary is telling us. 
but I'm not going to preach the same sermon as I did a few weeks ago, so because you've already heard that. But what I want to do today is to concentrate upon a few words within it, and there are the last verse. Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. A Lenten theme to it then, repent and believe. Now then, a while ago, a celebrated television newsreader, no names mentioned, provoked a national debate on what constitutes news. He remarked in a speech that the broadcasts focus too much on the bad news and not enough on the good news. And I think we might all agree with that statement and can possibly hear ourselves saying, why is it there's only bad news on the news? You could, on the other hand, say it's all relative. And what is good news for one person in one country is often bad news for another in another country. So today I want to start our, my sermon with a short video clip about a film that I've recently seen on Netflix called News of the World. I think that must be a first for us to watch something like that. I hope you enjoyed it. And the plot, as you've seen, is in 1870, Captain Jefferson Kyle Kidd, a former Confederate Army captain who makes a living traveling from town to town, reading the newspapers. Following one such evening of reading the news, Kidd sets out for his next location where he sees an overturned wagon on the road. And it's there that he finds a white girl named Johanna, dressed in Native American clothing. He then takes her down to the Bureau for Indian Affairs and is faced with the stark reality of either leaving her there or taking her back to her family or to what remains of it. There are many adventures upon the way, not least when they enter a town that has been purged of Indians and it's more like a bison factory and they're killing bison and uh, preserving the skins. And there's a leader there that is, well, very, very a dreadful man. But he speaks of another story in that town Instead of the story that the leader of the town wants to say, he talks about some coal miners who are trapped underground and how they fought and refused to die and dug themselves out of the town. He then goes on to incite a riot in the very place and the leader of the town is killed and they are free. Captain Kidd and Joanna make that journey down to their aunt and uncle's farmstead. And he leaves her there, and that leaving is marked with great sorrow for them both, though they have formed this wonderful friendship. He goes back to his hometown to find that his wife has died from cholera a few years before and has nothing left. He then decides to go back to get Johanna and to rekindle that relationship. When he gets back to the place where he left her, he finds her tied up to a pole outside, like a dog, because Johanna keeps running off and her aunt and uncle just don't know what to do with her. He takes off her fetters and they embrace. And then as any good story, which has a great ending, they go from town to town telling the good news. I think I must give you a warning that you must have some tissues handy if you're going to watch this film, because it's quite a tear jerker. Because it makes, the, it has all the hallmark, hallmarks of a good film. 
And I don't think, if we're honest, Tom Hanks has made a bad one, really. This film has good overcoming evil, justice overcoming terror, and love covering a multitude of sins. During the film, I kept asking myself, what would I do in similar circumstances? How is my life making any difference in this world? What can I do to share my story? And how do I tell people about God's love for them? And then I had this thought in my mind, what is Christ's story in my life? As I look back, a good Lenten discipline, I saw the good and the bad and the ugly. I looked back though and also began to see the incidences or the God incidences in my life converging together. As I look back, I was thankful for God's grace, for his mercy, but most of all, his love. A love that covers a multitude of sins. This, friends, is the good news of the message of Christ, that his love covers all our sins. As the people in that town and every town where Captain Kidd went gathered together in eagerness to hear the news about their world, so we gather today to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, not only for us, but for our world. The message of Lent is to repent and believe the good news as we have heard in our gospel passage. Friends, did you hear the good news today? We all have a story to tell. As we look back over our lives, ponder a while, muse a little, and see where God was at work, how the circumstances were just so, how things happened in a certain way. The philosopher Soren Kierkegaard, one of my favorite philosophers says that we live our lives going forward, but we only understand them going back, looking back. And too often in the busyness of this world, we just keep going, we just get dressed, Get, get up, get dressed and get on with it. Perhaps this Lent, we would look back. We would see where God intervened in our lives. We would acknowledge the Lord at work in our life. At work in places where we didn't even think or imagine. And probably to be truthful, we didn't even care. But then love covers a multitude of sins. And once you've done that, once you've got that sense, that feeling that you've looked over your life, turn around and look forward. There's a classic moment in that film when Captain Kidd and Johanna, both with their arms outstretched, say, forward. Look forward. Gather your life together in full knowledge of Jesus' love for you and begin to tell your story. Begin to tell our story of our life together in this time and in this place. Ask for inspiration how you can share the good news that Jesus heals broken lives. That Jesus can bring hope in any situation that we face. He can drive away our fear. He can bring peace into our lives, not war or strife. That is my desire for us as a community, to be that beacon of hope in these days and in this place and in this time. A place of sanctuary, a place of healing, a place where people grow and are nourished. Friends, proclaiming the good news involves all of us. 
My invitation is for us all to become part of this story today. We are all called to live a life God has created for us. Take that step. Gaze back over your life and then turn around into God's arms and go forward. It may not be the wild, wide, wild west here in Burbage. I'll give you that. But we need that frontier, that pioneer spirit, as we approach this brave new world that we are about to enter into. Because you've all said it, it will never be the same. Today, in this first Sunday of Lent, what a great opportunity it is to reflect and think about our part in proclaiming this good news. Today, it is good and is a good day to tell the good news to our world. Please join me in it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we all have a story. We all have a time and a place where you entered our story time and time again. And today, Heavenly Father, we acknowledge with gratitude the fact that your love surrounds us, that your love covers us, and all our sins. As we think, Lord, on our life with you, we pray that we would gird our loins for the next step of our journey, that we would be able to tell the news of Jesus Christ to our world with boldness, that we would be fearless, Lord, that we would create a beacon of hope in this place where people can come to find the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Today's intercessions were inspired by yesterday's news from around the world and thoughts of our response to the season of Lent. Heavenly Father, in humility and faith, we come before you and ask that you would hear us as we make our petitions and requests to you. 
We look back to our baptisms and are mindful of our baptismal promises. We turn to Christ and renounce evil, and we want to move forward in our new life in Jesus, believing that the gospel is indeed good news for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our excitement for adventure and exploration has been stirred this week by the pictures we have seen of NASA's Perseverance landing on Mars. May we this Lent be encouraged in our life of faith to reach out into the unknown and to go on a journey of adventure with Jesus. May we make discoveries about ourselves and our Lord, and may the church be blessed with a clear sense of direction and mission. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and for our Sovereign Lady, the Queen, we thank you for the wonderful example of a life of service set by our Queen. We ask you to bless her and her family, especially at this time. It has been a week of baby joys and yet also of family disappointments. We ask for your healing hand to rest on Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. As our Prime Minister prepares to speak to us all tomorrow, we pray for wisdom for the government and their scientific advisors. May the easing out of lockdown be done in a measured and orderly way so that social contact may be allowed whilst controlling the risks involved. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah our prayer. We do give thanks for our wonderful NHS and how the vaccine rollout has been managed in the United Kingdom. Help us as a nation to support the poorer nations by donating to the COVAX scheme. We know that in today's global world, none are safe until all are safe and we must seek justice when distributing the vaccines. And we pray for justice and freedom for the oppressed in our world. And we are continually mindful of the people of Myanmar as they campaign for democracy. And the cries of the oppressed, especially women such as Princess Latifa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Texas and parts of Mississippi and Tennessee. Help them to get the clean water they need and the power to keep them warm in the unusually freezing cold weather produced by an Arctic outbreak. And we also pray for people in Wales who are coping with flooding. May we learn to take care of our planet so that these freak weather patterns caused by global warming can be contained. You have given us such a wonderfully created world. And we acknowledge that we have been poor stewards of this blessing. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. our prayer. We pray for all those that we know and love who are sick, anxious, or feeling lonely and isolated. Sustain them, Lord, we pray, and may they know the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit on their bodies, minds, and spirits. Comfort those who mourn 
and may the recently departed rest in peace and rise in glory. We hold before you those whose anniversaries are today, Patricia Ann Bowden, Amos Lucas, Kenneth Herbert Bradbury, Henry James Albert Copson, Eunice John Hewitt, Brian Edwards, and Rita Viola Carter. We thank you that we are surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses in heaven, whoever sing praises to your glorious power, love and majesty. And we declare today that we will run the race set before us until we too can claim the crown of life from Christ our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Mary, for prayers from around our world. And I didn't actually give Mary the heads up on what I was going to speak about today. So that's, uh, I don't know, a God incidence, isn't it? Yes, it's always nice to uh, know that we're part of what God is trying to say to us. It's wonderful. So I'm now going to have a time where we share the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with everybody. Peace be with you in church. Peace, everybody. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them Let to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, living Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured, may be to us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread. He gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you this bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen on all the earth. Look with favour upon your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us at last with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Catherine, St. Peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We now have our communion hymn, In the Lord I'll Be Ever Thankful. say together the
the prayer for communion in separation. Lord Jesus Christ, life giver and good physician, here you meet me in our need. In a world marred by corruption and marked by death, draw me into true life. By your selfless sacrifice, help me to live for others and not myself. May I, who cannot now receive you sacramentally, embrace you more fully in my heart, mind and soul. Help me unite myself to you in spirit, so that I may be drawn closer to those from whom I am isolated in the body. Through sharing your life, giving up in death for us all, may we grow together in love into a richer and more profound communion of life. Amen. We're now going to have our notices from Rose. Thank you. Uh, just to say that the Lent courses begin this week. So there's still time to join in if you would like to. There's uh, one on Monday evening at 7.30 or Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. So please contact Christine and she can send you the Zoom link. It'd be lovely to have you. And following the success of the Burns Night Supper, there's going to be a St. Patrick's celebration on the 20th of March. It was a really good night, the Burns Night, so do consider joining us if you can. The ingredients for the Irish stew will be delivered to your door and the Wheel of Fortune will be used again. So please consider joining in and again, let Christine know if you would like to be added to the list. Thank you. Thank you, Roz. We're now going to have our final hymn, Sweet Sacrament Divine. Now have our dismissal. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Here ends our service for the first Sunday in Lent. <laughs>